Thanks a lot. Appreciate that. Tommy and I are going to do something that uh, we don't think has been done on video. I know it sounds odd, but uh, we don't uh, think there's been a presentation of the E ninth, and uh, so we thought it'd be a great idea to do it. And then Tommy came up with the idea that maybe we should also uh, videotape it. So here we go, and you know we haven't rehearsed with the band, so it's uh, it's there are going to be mistakes, but hopefully there'll be some great moments too. Uh, playing with this guy, I guarantee you there will be. Oh, man. And. Uh, uh, we thought the first song we'd do would be, uh, since it's the first song we're going to play, it'll be a song that was the very first song in the very first session of uh, the late, great Mill Street, a song called Bard Angel. Pick up, Tommy. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's great. Let's do it. Uh, you know, George Jones had many m great songs, and uh, our good buddy Tom Killen is here with us tonight. He, he plays, with, been with George many years. And uh, let's play one, uh, She Thinks I Still Care.
Thank you. I'm about to calm down. I think. <laughs> oh, now I'm in trouble. He's calming down. <laughs> Let's do, uh, you know, all the Hank Williams songs, uh, unlike most of the current music of today, uh, had great melodies. If you, to me, always a signature and the sign of a tremendous song is if, if you had, if you take the lyrics away, what have you got left, you know? And uh, all the great old songs of Hank's, uh, they're all playable because they have those gospel type uh, melodies. And I've tried to play some of these newer songs and you take, take the, the lyrics away and the architecture crumbles. You have nothing to, to latch on to. But something like this one is one that'll live forever and uh, when most of these current ones were forgotten. Cole Cole Hart.
If I'd known you were going to play it like that, we'd have played something else. <laughs> or something like yeah. that, yeah. That's wonderful. We we gotta speed the tempo up. We're gonna we're gonna lose everybody. They're gonna leave. Okay, <laughs> playing sleepy music. Two ten. We won't we won't play time. Let's play roll. Oh. With due apologies to Johnny Cox. <laughs> Lloyd, one of the favorite uh, things of mine, I, I like to hear you play, is Farewell Party, of course, because you played the intro and um, such a beautiful job, and it's, it's legendary, and I'd like for you to play it. Okay. I, I, can I tell the story? I, the story. Yes, please do. Gene Watson uh, told this story one night on WSM. I got a good memory of all those sessions, and, and I was listening to it on, on uh, one of the sh shows, and I, and I was really impressed with his uh, attention to detail. He had everything right, told exactly how we cut this. It was the end of a session. They were trying to fill the album up, as always, in the 70s. They would come to the steel and say, can you do this one? We just needed to fill the album so they didn't have to go over time. You know? and, and I said, sure. We did it in one take. And so Gene's telling the story. And he, and he got to the end, everything was perfect, and he said, and he told Eddie Stubbs, the, the announcer, and he said, but, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. And I, and I wanted to jump through the radio and say, e speak for yourself. <laughs> that, that's the reason we could do that song in one take, because uh, we knew what we were doing, the musician. But Gene meant well, he didn't mean what that uh, he was. He's a great singer, I sure enjoyed cutting with him. This is one of my favorite tunes that I ever played on. Uh, and actually, it was the last song I ever cut with Gene Watson, as a matter of fact.
Just pick me up on your way down, the great Charlie uh, Walker song. Record Jimmy Day played on the original version way back in about 1960 or so. Why don't we do, a couple of people ask if we'd do a gospel number. And, uh, I think it'd be really, really neat if we could do softly and tenderly. Okay. Thank you very much. Tommy used to play with a group called the Whites, and uh, they they did this song a, a lot. I, I remember hearing Tommy play it so beautifully on the Opry, and uh, so I asked him if we could do this. It's one goes back a long long before Tommy and me actually, Kitty Wells, and back in the fifties, making believe.
give us a second. We've jumped out of our order. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's fine. I, I like this one. Sorry about that, Rick. Thanks. We're going to do the Pat Heller rag now.
Thank you. We'll, we'll skip that one. Okay. Do an old Pasic line tune, a great one. I fall to pieces.
Here's a, an old Jimmy Dickens song that, was, uh, that uh, the original cut Walter Haynes played on it back in the medieval 1950s. It was, and it was one of the classic solos on Take Me As I Am. We're in the key of C, I'm sorry. It's unrehearsed. <laughs> Told you there'd be a lot did, of mistakes. Did we mention this was unrehearsed? <laughs> what key were we in, Lloyd? Uh, I was in uh, Miss Key. <laughs> we're going to be in the key of C, though. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to watch this back when... <laughs> so, <laughs> we're going to have to look... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Lloyd.
regard? We had a request to play um, another gospel song, so I, I, I would like to play In the Garden, and Lloyd just plays this fabulously. I've heard him play it before. It's, just, it's great. What key will we be in, Lloyd? Uh, F. <laughs> F, okay.
Well, Lloyd, how do you feel about what we just did? Tom, I had a great time. It was it was a wonderful experience. This, this is a hard audience to play for, of course. And, you know, you and I discussed this in advance that we wanted to kind of showcase the E-Night, and it's, uh, it hasn't been done on a video before. And uh, you were a man of your word. You adhered to the e Ninth, and never once did I see your hands go over to the C-6. Well, I appreciate that. Oh, I, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done that. I, I am a man of my word. I, I think it went well. I, I feel like I could have played better, but you played, sitting beside you, you is like, it's, it's an awesome experience to sit by the master and, and, uh, and try to hang. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would equally repay the compliment. It is, a, it is a grand experience for me, and I wouldn't have, wouldn't have passed this up for anything. And uh, it's something I'll cherish. And, and I hope we, the people who get to see this, the players, will enjoy the moment. You know, I mean, we obviously didn't get a chance to rehearse any of this, and except Tommy and I got together and. Uh, but uh, we expected to make mistakes, but you know, everybody... Oh yeah, I think that's going to be part of the charm of what sure. we, you know, the video is that we, it's unrehearsed and we, we did make mistakes. I made a bunch of mistakes, but well, uh, I, I had a great time doing it. I always said that uh, when I used to cut records that that was the illusion of, uh, of um, music life, that people hear, would hear the two and a half, three minute finished product and they never heard all the mistakes we made and had an opportunity to go and fix. Now they see the real... The real truth is we're buried up here, and uh, uh, but it, it, it's fun to do it, and I couldn't, can't imagine playing with anybody else that would have been such a great experience as this was. Well, tell me why. thank you, Lloyd. I feel the same way. I hope all that, that purchased this tape enjoy watching it as much as we enjoyed doing it. Ditto. Enjoy. <laughs>